So when I came on staff in 1997, Jer was supposedly retired, whatever that meant, because it was a joke. To this day, Jr. is doing fundraisers, and he's 77 now. So Jer was extremely involved and is still extremely involved, and this whole idea of the keys being transferred as some sort of retirement, I never really related to that because Jr. has always just done his work. And I think, in my experience, a lot of what Jr. did was to support John doing the work, and because when John does the work, it allowed Jr. to do other work. You know, maybe it was different work, but he was still doing the same spiritual work that he's always been doing. Um, and it also, I give a lot of thanks to John because it allows his being out there um, doing, I call it the daily grind of the spiritual work, allows Jer to really take care of himself in a better way. Um, and as Jer continues to do his work. Well, the first time I actually met Jer, I was like five years old, and it was a family retreat in Northern California. And it's kind of an arc, my story, because I, I didn't, you know, I was around Jer a little bit back then, but really my grandmother was involved um, with Jr. and so that's how I met him. But it was much later that I actually met him again at a conference after I'd been on discourses, and I went to a conference, and I kept saving seats in the very front row for me and my mom and my grandma. And Jr. called me out, and I was uh, I was kind of. Uh, a wise ass, basically, and I bantered back and forth with Jr. Um, but I had already known inside that I really wanted to be with Jr. in terms of doing the work that he was doing because it just moved me inside. Okay, so in 1995, I met with Jr. at conference and we sat down together, and he told me a lot about myself and about my life, and then he also told me about himself and some of the work he does, and I don't know how much, how many people have really seen what Jared does personally um, with his initiates and with the world besides those on staff and he takes a lot of things into his physical body and he has to work on them and a lot of what that means is that he ta has a lot of health issues and a lot of challenges that he has to work through physically and it's really not a glamorous job and I think anyone who's been with him for a period of time realizes that it's not that great. I mean, there's these amazing experiences you have and these amazing things, but he also takes on these things. So, cut to later on in 1997. I'm 17. I've graduated high school. I know what I want to do with my life. I want to take care of JR. I want to be with him. I want to work with him um, and do the spiritual work that he's doing, be on staff, travel, all of that. So. I'm in communication with JR and I'm very clear with what I want to do and um, eventually he says okay you know let's we can try it out and so I flew I actually when I really tried it out was I f um, I flew and met up with JR and Zeus and John in Spain for the 1997 French tour and they had been at Valderrama which was a golf tournament and that was back in the days when we would all play golf. So uh, me, Zeus, John, and Jared would all play golf together, and we'd travel from place to place, bring our clubs, play golf. And you could say you could learn a lot of, people say that you know a lot about someone by how they golf. So Zeus would just murder the ball. He would hit it as hard as he possibly can many times breaking the club in the process. The club head goes flying off down the, the fairway, maybe as far as the ball, and just he's just destroying the ball. So his goal was to hit it as hard as he can. John, John would hit his ball and then he would just be so angry with how it went that he'd throw his club, he'd get all upset, and sometimes even throw it in the water. I remember that one because um, he just kept putting the ball into the water and then finally he put the club in the water. Now JR, as a golfer, would always golf the same way. He used his little club he called the up and downer. And it's basically this little triangle wedge 
that he would sometimes even putt with. And he pretty much used it from the tee, and he would hit the ball, maybe 100 yards, every time, right in the middle. And then right in the middle. And here, you know, John's in the bushes, Zeus is uh, getting on John's case, but then Zeus has lost his balls and is trying to borrow some from John. You know, I'm frustrated and not doing very well, hooking my shots all over the place. And there JR is, in the middle, in the middle. And so, I don't know what that says about JR's personality, but he tended to live his life that way. You know, he was always ordinary, but almost in an extraordinary type of way. I mean, he was just, you know, step by step, working on himself, working on... Um, Talk about now about food, like one instance, not a lot. We'll go crazy. Food, yeah. Nice. The only thing I got is 31 flavors, so if you have oh, something else... I know, I've got 31 flavors. <laughs> I was going to go 31 flavors, so if you have you get something else... I mean, you know, like... Nah. Yeah, Jerry. 31 flavors. What's that? Time we were in LA because Jared was still, we were traveling all over the place still. But I, we would go to Dolores every morning, probably around 10 o'clock or so. And Jared would have two eggs over easy, a side of beans, an English muffin with jelly, and a cup of coffee with one packet of sugar every morning. That was, that was our breakfast and ours because at that point, you know, I wanted to be like Jared, so I was copying Jared. And I had the same same food, um, and that lasted for years. And I mean, one thing that that we did a lot of, though, on a different note, was that we drove a lot. Um, Jer would go on these all night drives um, sometimes because you know he was just doing the work. I mean, that's usually he was always doing the work. I mean, he worked so hard. I remember one time I tried. For a while, I was trying to like keep up with him, and you know he would be on emails till three thirty four in the morning. Then we'd be up in the morning. He'd be working, um, doing you know doing meetings, whether it's you know for USM with Ron and Mary, or with Insight, or with the Prez MSIA, or John, or whoever, whoever, whatever the organizations were needing. He, you know, Jared was always there behind the scenes, um, meeting with the heads, giving them direction. Um, helping them work through their problems on an organizational level. And he told me one morning, I remember it, I was sitting in the chair in his office while he was doing email, and he's like, you know what? You can't keep up with me. Don't even try. And for a lot of years I tried, but, and I couldn't. I mean, he just, he had this energy that you just couldn't really keep up with him. Um, not the way he did it. And you know, we go for so we go for the uh, these all night drives, or or we'd be doing, you know, spiritual work clearings all night. The one that stands out is the the big tsunami in Thailand. Um, we were up all night, it, I mean literally all night, working on this area um, where called Krakatawa or something like that, which is right, you know, miles away from the epicenter of where the earthquake was. But this was before the earthquake happened. And then later, you know, within hours of us finishing the clearing, you know, we found out there was this massive quake, which then led to the, the massive tidal wave, which wiped out tons of people. And, you know, there, there's so many of these experiences where Jared's working on something spiritually and if you're with him and he tells you about it you kind of you get a sense of like the magnitude of the work that you know that we're doing and that 
you know, he used the people around him who had the same spiritual focus as batteries, and, you know, sometimes that meant you were just gone, you know, you were out of your body somewhere else. Um, so, I have fond memories of some of the drives, because we listened to, you know, 50s music, and just be driving, and eat, and, you know, be stopping for a donut, you know, he'd kind of be like, go here, you know, go there, take a right here. Oh, is that, yeah, is that a donut place right there? And you just, you know, <laughs> you knew that he dare was going for the donut at that moment. Uh, anyway, so that that was fun stuff about about the food. So look into the camera and tell Jared where you want him to go. Jared, I've told you this many times, but it never gets old. I thank you for everything. And... Words just don't say. So I hope you can read in my heart because I love you. And that's...